Hi, I'm Dr. Rob Myers, and this is Cardio Talks. I'm a cardiologist at Sunnybrook Hospital in Toronto. The goal of these videos is to explain common cardiac conditions in a way that is easy to understand. And this is a video that will discuss the management of atrial fibrillation, a condition that I have some other videos that I spoke about in terms of what causes it and how it presents. And this is specifically going to be an emergency department approach. Now, the reason that's helpful is when you go into an emergency department, you should know what to expect with this. A lot of people do present to the emergency department with it. And I do find on occasion, the management is not what I would consider to be um, ideal. So you're in the emergency department for a number of reasons, but most likely you've got symptoms. So your heart rate is beating fast. You have palpitations, lightheadedness. You don't feel well, you're breathless. Maybe you're going to call an ambulance immediately. Maybe you waited a day. Maybe you waited two days, but you know something's wrong. At other times, patients go to their family doctor, very mild symptoms. The doctor identifies atrial fibrillation, and though your symptoms are absent sometimes or mild, sends you to the hospital anyway. Sometimes that's appropriate. Usually it isn't. Usually it's better just to call me. So when you show up in the emergency department, there's a triage system, obviously. If your big toe hurts, you're not going in very quickly. You're going to be waiting. If your heart rate when you show up at the emergency department is 60 or 70, so it's normal, even if you're in atrial fibrillation, if you're otherwise well without symptoms, they're going to keep you waiting if there's a line to get in. But if you show up and by ambulance and your heart rate's 130 or even on your own 140 and it's super fast, you're going to get whisked in right away. We don't like fast heartbeats. So you go in there, you get that pretty little blue gown, put in an intravenous, put you on what's called telemetry, which is the monitor behind you. You get an electrocardiogram or ECG, whether you get a chest x-ray or oxygen, depends on how you're feeling. So the doctor comes in and your heart rate's fast. What do you want to do? You want to slow down the heart rate and there's lots of ways to do that. So some doctors in the emergency department will give you a medication in your vein, which is known as a beta blocker, such as metoprolol or labetalol. There's different types of beta blockers or a calcium channel blocker, nothing to do with the calcium in your body. So don't worry, called cardizam, diltiazam, ferapamil. So you're going to get a drug in your vein to slow down your heartbeat. The thing about this is there's lots of different ways to manage this in an emergency department, all of which are valid. It depends on the way you've presented, how you're feeling, what your blood pressure is. That's a critically important determinant of management, how fast your heartbeat is. So there's so many things that go into it. It's not one size fits all, but that would be one option. I'm going to slow down your heartbeat. So one of the errors I see, which is kind of annoying, is when your heartbeat gets slowed and it's busy or the eMERGE doc doesn't want to bother sometimes, you'll be kicked out of the eMERGE. You'll be like, oh, half hour later, your heart rate looks good. You're feeling fine. Your blood pressure is good. Here, take this medication to keep it slow and go see your cardiologist or your family doctor and get referred or they'll refer you. Terrible way to deal with it. So with the prov provision, the caveat that you have arrived in the emergency department, clearly within 24 hours of the onset of your rhythm, you should never go home unless an attempt is made to get rid of the rhythm. So it is, from my perspective, a bad medicine to take that kind of a person and say, oh, your heart rate's slower, out you go. And I'll explain why. So if it's beyond 24 hours, you get a higher risk of a stroke. Some say 36, but you know, we're always very careful about this. So if you're beyond 24 hours, clearly, or we do not know when it started because it was recently noted and you have no symptoms, well, then we're not going to get rid of the rhythm before you go. So that's not an expectation that can be met. But if you're less than 24 hours, here's the problem. Now, about 50% of the time with your episodes of occasional atrial fibrillation called paroxysmal, it'll go away on its own within 24 hours. Lovely. But what about the other 50%? I had a patient once who was in Japan, visiting Japan, got atrial fibrillation. It was kind of interesting the way they managed it. He was stable. They gave him a drug to slow the heartbeat and said, come back in 24 hours. And it's logical. I guess it kind of reduces the pressure on the system. Wouldn't be my first choice. I wouldn't want to go into my hotel room in a foreign country with a new cardiac problem, but I can understand the logic of it. By sending you out, here's the problem is if you don't get rid of the atrial fibrillation, now you're living for 
a month with the atrial fibrillation until you see me, or a week or two weeks, but because you've been sent home with it, meaning it's going to be going on more than 24 hours, now you need to be on a blood thinner for a month before I get rid of the rhythm. So you're a little uncomfortable, your heart rate's fast, they gave you a drug to slow it down, but I'll explain later why that doesn't always work. So now you got to live for a month or longer, and then i got to electively bring you into the hospital and give you this electric shock. Terrible care. Terrible. Because it inconveniences you, puts you on medication. Literally, it could be for months. Instead of what? What's the alternative? Well, the doctor comes in and says, oh, you've had atrial fibrillation for less than 24 hours. Everything seems stable here. I'm going to get rid of it before you leave the emergency department. That is the standard of care. Anything else, you just shouldn't accept it. You shouldn't accept it. You should question it. So how do we get rid of it in an emergency department? There's a couple of ways. One way is to give you a completely different type of drug in your vein, which doesn't just slow the heartbeat down, but also has a special ability to get rid of the rhythm. It's called an antiarrhythmic. Examples, there's lots of them. But examples could include amiodarone, procainamide, sometimes doctors will use ibutilide, relatively new. So there's lots of options, and I'm not so concerned about the option used, I'm concerned about doing it. That's one choice. So they hang a bag of this medication, you'll get it for an hour, or you'll get a bolus of amiodarone, or you'll get that for an hour, and that will really improve the chances of getting rid of the rhythm, and then they can kick you out and see me. The other method, which is faster, is Basically what you see on television, you get an electrical cardioversion, zap. Now you're asleep for that. So the emergency doctor and a colleague or an anesthetist will give you medication to knock you out for about three or four minutes. These drugs always amaze me. Whether it's ketamine or propofol, the Michael Jackson drug, you're completely unconscious for such a brief amount of time. And so you can safely get that electrical shock, which depending on the cause of your atrial fibrillation and how long you've been in it, It'll work more than 90, 95% of the time. No damage, no harm. The risks of a cardioversion are tiny. There's always a risk for anything. It doesn't matter what it is. But in my lengthy career, I have only very, very rarely seen complications from cardioversions, except for they don't always work. So now, there you are. You're a little groggy. You're feeling better. Your rhythm is normal. What's the next step? Well, the next step is to see me. You shouldn't be getting this managed by a family doctor or an internist unless the internist is very good and very comfortable with the management of the rhythm, which is perfectly fine. As long as they know what they're doing and they stay in their lane, great. Anybody can manage it, but it should generally be a specialist. So depending on the your age, your underlying conditions, in general, the standard of care at the present time, regardless actually, is to spend uh, one month on a blood thinner what's called an oral anticoagulant or novel oral anticoagulant. There are some new ones out there, relatively new. And these medications help to prevent stroke. So it's a little controversial because I did say it depends on what other illnesses you have. The guideline says, you know, if you're a healthy 30-year-old and you have atrial fibrillation and we shock you out of it, you go on a blood thinner. Our ability to predict stroke risk in someone like that, it's not very robust. It's kind of a cautious approach. I'm not always totally in agreement, but guidelines are guidelines. Um, the idea is this. If we shock you out of the rhythm, then sometimes that top chamber of the heart doesn't really recover that ability to contract as easily, even though it looks normal on an electrocardiogram. So when blood doesn't circulate as well in the top chambers, it's called stasis, And that lends itself to a blood clot formation, something that could even be the size of a period at the end of a sentence. And so a blood clot can break off and cause a stroke. So in general, you are going to go home with at least one month of a powerful blood thinner. Now, now the reason I have some questions about it, depending on your risks, is blood thinners have complications, such as bleeding to death. But like anything, it's not the severity of it, it's the frequency a low frequency, but, you know, hit your head, you could be in trouble, fall and break a bone, you could be in trouble. So there's all sorts of other elements. You can't look at a medication as one side of an equation. It's always two sides of the equation. So you go on the blood thinner. The emergency doctor is very unlikely to put you on an antiarrhythmic. Most doctors wouldn't 
be comfortable with that, totally understandably, but they might send you home on an oral form of a drug to slow your heartbeat, like a beta blocker or a calcium channel blocker that I mentioned in oral form. I don't generally like that. The reason is the dose is going to be low and it's unlikely to have a significant impact on the next episode. Now, there is rules for these and other circumstances, but if you go into the eMERGE with one of, you know, your first few episodes of atrial fibrillation, your heart rate's fast, by sending you home on these drugs, what it means is this. It'll do nothing to get rid of the rhythm. It doesn't prevent another episode. That's an antiarrhythmic. If it just slows your heartbeat, then you're just as likely to go into it. Now, sure, your heart rate will be a little slower, but in my mind, there's a disadvantage to that. And the disadvantage is you may be less likely to go to hospital the next time because you're not feeling feeling it the same way. Now, that's, that's the microscopic management of it. In the big picture, of course, I don't want you to have symptoms. And so sending you home on these drugs, I usually stop them and then talk about the definitive treatment when you come to my office. So that covers the expectations of management in an emergency department. And the next video, I'm going to talk about what happens when you come to see me. I hope that helps.